after telling us that the works of the flesh are manifest, and are such as are not indulged by the believer who is resting in the truth of their identity in Christ, we concluded that as spirit-sealed to indwelt members of the body of Christ, we can and should have confident expectations of what the Spirit will produce in our lives, namely, crucifixion of the flesh, having dealt with works of the flesh. Now Paul turns to what we can confidently expect that the Spirit will produce in our lives as we have rested belief in the truth, rightly divided, rightly divided. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Galatians 5 verses 22 to 26. Let's take a closer look at this. Yes, Paul said, works of the flesh are manifest. Then he uses one of my favorite words, but, for with the flesh denied I crucified, Paul now can proclaim, but the fruit of the Spirit is. And we must first note that it is not your fruit from your work. Rather it is the fruit produced by Holy Spirit as we have rested belief in the truths of who we are in Christ. This is borne out in some very well-known verses, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2 verses 8 to 10. Many times, folks stop at verse 8 and miss just who does the good works in the life of the believer. The works are his workmanship, and they are such works as he before ordained. Example, the works were ordained by him before the foundation of the world. Yes, we can have confident expectation that, as we have rested belief in the rightly divided word of truth, Holy Spirit will produce the fruits of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And if we do not see Him producing such, it can generally be traced back to the lack of rested belief in said truth. Also, concerning the law, we should note that, as a work of the flesh, it can neither add to nor subtract from the fruit of the Spirit. We quoted Galatians 5 verse 24 in previous reading, but we'll note it again. As regards Holy Spirit producing His fruit hinges on the past tense truth that they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts, for Spirit's fruit and the works of the flesh, law works in the instance of the Galatians, cannot coexist, as they are mutually exclusive thus with the Spirit keeping the flesh in the position of crucifixion, it can be said that, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit, and on this basis, let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, for you see, since these are Holy Spirit's fruits in our lives, we cannot claim any credit or glory. And thus, there is no reason for believers to compare fruits as if we had something to do with their production other than cooperation, with the work of Holy Spirit by rest in the truth. Believer have rested belief in the truth of your flesh crucified and confident expectation of Holy Spirit, producing His fruit in you as you walk in Him.